Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and in this podcast, I'm going to talk about lipids or the fats. The fat that's found in butter or the fat that's found in olive oil is what we call a triglyceride. It's basically going to have a head, a glycerol head, and then it's going to have three fatty acid tails, and that's where the energy is. And so when we eat fat, we can break it down. We have enzymes called lipases that are able to break that down, and then we can get energy from it. And that's been very important. We can store energy and fats inside our body, and then we can burn them when we need them. But don't forget that fats, in addition to providing energy, also provide the surroundings. And so the cell membrane that goes around every cell is made up of phospholipids. And the cholesterol is found within the phospholipid bilayer, and that maintains the fluidity of the cell. And so lipids are incredibly important. But where does the energy come from? That comes from the hydrocarbons. And so if you look at those fatty acid tails, it's essentially a carbon attached to a carbon 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 to a
since then, and so there's not a lot of these adverse reactions. Uh, I think Pringles, like light chips, still contain Olestra in it, but we're tricking our body because the body doesn't have those enzymes. Now, I also said there are two more important lipids. The first one's called phospholipids. Phospholipids are going to have, you can see, two fatty acid tails, but they're going to have a head that contains a phosphate group. That phosphate group is going to have a negative charge. And so normally, if we were to pour oil into water, it's going to separate. And the reason why is that fats are nonpolar. They don't have a charge. But what's neat about phospholipids is that they have a head that is going to have a negative charge, and then they have the tails that are uncharged. And so if you just throw a bunch of phospholipids in water, they'll form these spheres, these mice cells, or they'll form these spontaneous membranes. And so the cell membranes of all cells are made up of phospholipids. And so bacteria, archaea, eukarya, plants, animals, fungi, we all have cell membranes, and those membranes are made up of phospholipids. They regulate what gets in and out of a cell. Cholesterol is going to maintain the fluidity of the membrane. And so this cell membrane right here is made up of phospholipids. Those phospholipids are constantly moving back and forth. And that's important because it allows things like oxygen to get in and carbon dioxide to get out. But if the cell gets heated up, those phospholipids had, tend to fall apart. And if it gets really cold, they'll crowd together. And so the function of cholesterol is to grab onto those fatty acid tails and hold them together when it gets too cold, but keep them apart, uh, or hold them together when they get too warm and keep them apart when they get too cold. And so cholesterol is important at maintaining that integrity of the cell membrane. And you can see cholesterol in this diagram right here. Um, we can build it in our, each of our cells, and we have to build it in our cells, but we have to get a little bit of it in our diet. And so we need lipids in our diet. If we don't have lipids, we can't get energy, and more importantly, we can't make our cell membranes. However, today, everybody's getting the fat that they need. This is my favorite place to eat when I go to California because we don't have them in Montana. This is In-N-Out Burger. I love the taste of a big burger from In-N-Out. Um, the lipids are great, but there's probably too much trans fats in there. It's not good for me and could lead to heart disease. But for now, I'm going to keep eating them. So that's lipids, that's fat, and I hope that was helpful.